Anyone studying the Galactic Civil War between the Empire and the Rebel Alliance might be forgiven for arriving at the conclusion that this was a fight between good and evil. But while I think this clear-cut morality can be applied very easily to the Jedi and the Sith, I'm always looking for more shades of grey across the galaxy as a whole. Billions, maybe trillions of people were loyal to the Empire. Surely they couldn't all be evil, any more than every member of the Rebellion must have been a paragon of social virtue. Thankfully, we're increasingly seeing evidence that the Rebels did indeed have a bit of moral complexity to them. In any conflict, especially when one side is at a severe disadvantage, it's completely understandable that some elements might act with brutality and hatred, no matter how noble the greater cause. But the Empire, by contrast, remains very simple. Anyone within its ranks who displays even the barest signs of empathy, warmth, or really any positive quality will invariably defect to the Rebellion. Those that remain are universally cruel or stupid, driven by either malice or greed. As a result, anyone wearing the uniform of the Galactic Empire, who isn't an undercover rebel spy, never feels like an actual person to me. They might as well be automatons who deserve to be destroyed by their moral superiors. Now part of this is to be expected. Fascist regimes like the Empire that promote the loyal over the competent are breeding grounds for corruption, avarice, and ineptitude. But this has been elevated to such a cartoonish extreme that it's hard to imagine how they're able to stay in power. Surely there must be somebody in the Empire actually good at their job, someone loyal to the regime not out of fear but because of a genuine belief that it's making the galaxy a better place, someone who if you met them on the street you'd get along with and be able to share some laughs or maybe a meal. What makes any brutal, tyrannical regime interesting to me is their ability to take otherwise kind and intelligent people and indoctrinate them so thoroughly that they can interpret the most horrific acts as something positive. And this is why Deputy Inspector Cyril Karn has my attention. Now, to be fair, we've only witnessed the briefest slice of his career, and it's entirely possible that he'll end up becoming a mustache-twirling two-dimensional villain or defect to the Rebellion. And he's not technically an Imperial officer, rather a member of a corporate security force. But all that aside, Karn might be the first Imperial-aligned figure that I have some empathy for. A person with good qualities in service to an evil regime. And if you'll allow me to play armchair psychologist for a second, I think we can see how this has happened. Karn, it's pretty clear, is not great at making connections with people. He's not particularly charismatic. There's no room for doubt on the path to success and uh, justice. So in the absence of any natural ability to create meaningful connections with other people, he invests himself into an institution, in this case the Preox Morlana Corporation. And in case it needs to be said, being uncharismatic in social situations is not a crime, nor does it make Karn a bad person. And often, the people who wholly direct their energies into institutions can bring about the greatest change or successes. Inspector Karn has dedicated himself to his career, and I think his purpose in life is no less noble than any other. And I think we can see that Karn is actually quite admirable in his work ethic and personal morality. Where other officers and employees are rather undisciplined in their appearance, Karn keeps his uniform immaculate, even having it tailored at presumably his own expense. Where others are complacent in their duties, Karn is motivated and deliberate, pushing the boundaries of investigations in search of the truth. When his superior urges him to sweep under the rug the deaths of two Primor officers, he instead pursues their killer with even greater effort. I think these are all positive qualities. Karn is not driven by ambition or greed, he simply believes in the work. So every action he takes is logical and understandable. All this man has done is try to solve the murder of his compatriots. The problem is, Preox Morlana is not worthy of his devotion. By all accounts, it is a corrupt institution with many of the same moral failings as the Empire it serves. And this is exemplified in the attitude of Karn's direct superior, Chief Inspector Hein. To Karn, failing to investigate these murders would make him unfit to wear the uniform, but to Hein, it's just a hassle to be dismissed as quickly as possible. Rather than thoroughly investigate the deaths, Hein wants to concoct a story to explain them that is sad but inspiring and ultimately mundane. I don't understand. I want you to conjure a suitable accident. But and let's make sure it's on the far side of the plaza. Let's get it outside the leisure zone. But they were murdered. No, they were killed in a fight. On at least some level, this must have been a terrible wound to Karn's worldview. 
He's seeking in Priok's Merlana acceptance, trust, and friendship. He desperately wants to believe that if he had been the one to be gunned down in the streets, his fellow officers would display the same level of dedication to finding the killer that he has. Instead, Karn is given overt evidence by Hein that people like him really don't matter. Is it any wonder, then, that Karn performs the mental gymnastics necessary to reconcile this evidence with his own personal beliefs? Karn is devoted to the institution. If there is a problem, it's not systemic within that institution, but instead isolated to a few bad people in the wrong positions. To Karn, Priox Morlana is not the problem, and will never be the problem. And that's the real tragedy of Cyril Karn. If he had been born a few decades earlier, he might have done some real good for the Galactic Republic and the galaxy. But he had the misfortune to live under the Empire. And I think it's inevitable that the Imperial Security Bureau, or some other Imperial organization, will give Inspector Karn the feeling of camaraderie he desires. He'll trade one institution for another, and then the Empire will have one more good man willing to do terrible things. However monstrous his deeds, Karn will remain ordinary, neither demonic nor monstrous. And while I think we all like to imagine that if we were put in Karn's position, we'd have the courage to recognize the failures and evils of the system we serve and take dramatic action against it, the sad reality is that most of us don't, and would just sit back and do nothing. And that's all that is necessary for the triumph of evil. Both over the galaxy, and people like Inspector Cyril Karn, who devoted his life to an institution that couldn't care less about him. The Templin Institute investigates the nations, factions, and organizations of alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards.